So I want to enforce in everybody's mind a correlation between what we have right here with the return and what we have right here in the signature. And that's again is the signature is the type of data we are giving back to whoever is invoking this. And then the return statement specifies the data that we're returning. Now the interesting thing about a return statement is that a return statement will actually stop the execution of the method. What I mean by that is once a method has hit a return statement, it will exit out and go back to wherever it was. And that's a discussion we will definitely be talking about um, uh, with the whiteboard a little bit later. But the important thing to realize about the signature of the method is the return type, the method name, the parameters, which I'll, I'll get a little bit more in depth in the parameters in a second, and then if we have a return type, we actually have to return the value back to the user or to wherever. So let's take a moment and look at what we actually did up here. We have three decimals that are being initialized to a method invocation. Now that again is a term we've been using over and over and over again since day one is the concept of a method invocation. And we see examples of method invocations um, on line 14 and on line 15, where what we're doing is we're asking the computer to do something for us that main doesn't know how to do. Main doesn't know how to interact with the console or print stuff out. That's console's job. Main doesn't know how to retrieve a decimal from the user. That's the get decimal from user's job. So what we're doing here is because get decimal from user has a return, because it has a return type that is filled with a value here on line 29, we can use it in expressions. And one of the most basic expressions that we have in C sharp is the assignment expression, which you see three or four or five examples of in this code base. <clears throat> 